Yes, obviously almost every sole mate who has been aborted or miscarried never spends much time here on earth, but their sole mate may live a full life on earth and never meet their soul mate because of the abortion or the miscarriage. So yes, there are times, and obviously there's, what, 50 million abortions every year. So there's 50 million soulmates every single year who don't get to spend time with their soulmate on earth. All right? So this is part of the problem, part of the problem with abortion, for example, is you're not only taking away the free will of the child you just aborted, you're taking away the free will of its partner to, you know, to a large degree. So that's why it's such a serious thing. Does that make sense? But as you develop in love, the law of attraction still works. So even if your soulmate is has passed, they'll still be attracted to you. If that makes sense. So what you'll find is that many people who have passed, uh, maybe aborted or miscarried on earth or died very young on earth, never met their soulmate on earth, they pro progress to the third or fourth or fifth sphere, and by that stage they usually know who their soulmate is on earth, and from that moment on, they spend heaps of time with that person. Now they spend heaps of time with you in your awake state, but when you're in your sleep state, they try and meet up with you and spend time with you in your sleep state as well. Does that make sense? And in the end, you can have a seamless relationship with them, in the sense that you can have a permanent relationship with a spirit, and it can be also be a sexual relationship. But it just depends on you developing your soul condition. And very few people on earth do that, of course, because they want physical touch or they want that, you know, those kind of expressions. And so they don't, you know, they'd rather go for an earth-based relationship rather than that kind of a relationship. But it is possible. Up back next. <coughs> Yep. So if a baby is aborted and goes into the spirit world, to what form are they in the spirit world? They are, you've mentioned before that we're, we're like we are now. No, no, they're a little baby yeah. and they grow, uh, they're nursed in the summer land by, by, um, by a, usually a celestial spirit and they're actually taught many beautiful things. By the time they're three or four years of age, they know a lot more than what we do here on Earth by the time we're 70, generally. And, uh, and they have a very full existence and life and are loved very much. And they are offered the two paths of progression as well, the natural love path or the divine love path. But they're never forced to make a choice between them. They just make their own choices. As to how fast their physical body grows, well, that's totally dependent upon their own desire. So their physical body grows as, as they desire it to grow. Okay. Um, when you're, talk you're talking about age before between couples, when, when a, a soul is split in the two halves, yep. that happens when a child is born, is that right? They, they no, at, at, at conception. Conception, sorry. Yep. So when that soul splits in two, it immediately goes into at two like not immediately, days. no. You have one go into one, and the other will hover in the spirit in the spirit state, waiting for a chance to incarnate nearby where the first one incarnated generally. Okay, that's fine. Well, there could be a, an age difference. And often there might be an age difference. Soulmates. There will be an age difference between soulmates, always. Uh, they don't ever generally incarnate into, say, twins or something like that. That would be a highly rare occasion. I've never seen that occur. But the, one, the first one will incarnate, the second one w hovers around the first waiting for incarnation and then incarnates. And that difference in years, Earth time might be 20 years. Of course, the one left behind doesn't notice the difference in time because they're not conscious of themselves yet and they're not conscious of time. 